and we're live. Welcome uh, to this late, latest edition of uh, Totally Unscripted. My name is Martin Hoxie. Um, we've got a lot of the regular crew in. Uh, we've got some new faces in as well. We've um, got the King of Script, uh, Roman, uh, and also the Prince of Script, uh, James Ferreira as well is here. Um, so, hi guys, how are you doing? Hi. Hi. So, as usual, we'll do uh, a very bit, brief bit of news, but um, some of this will be covered also in, in the show. So, I think the the main kind of thing to come out recently is, uh, um, as, as spotted by Steve on the um, AppScript documentation, there's quite a few early access programs for you uh, to participate in now. So there are currently uh, four programs. So um, hopefully you've been following some of the news around AppMaker, and we're delighted to have James here. Um, he will be giving us uh, a tour of AppMaker. So even if you're not on the early access program, um, you can start looking at the, the potential and start salivating slightly from the corner of your mouth. We also, uh, Google announced there is a cloud logging uh, EAP. Uh, and uh, this is kind of you know, touched upon by Romain as as he shows us the, the current way that you can do things like cloud logging in AppScript. And uh, the two other ones are uh, uh, that have been announced is flexible quotas, which um, there isn't a huge amount of information on, but um, I think we're all trying to work out how that is actually going to work out in the end. Um, this allows, um, if your script runs out of quota during execution, uh, there's kind of a rollover and it will uh, pick up where it left off. Um, but uh, there's not a huge amount of detail on that. And we also have extended script execution, which I think is um, a request that has been in that script for, for quite a while. So um, instead of the six minute execution, there's a, an opportunity uh, to run scripts for, for 30 minutes. Um, so um, we'll drop the link uh, to the page if you want to sign up for uh, early access to any of these programs yourself. Um, and uh, hopefully over the next couple of months, uh, there'll be uh, opportunity for uh, the community who get onto these programs to, to feedback. Just like we are hopefully going to have today. Without further ado, we're going to jump straight into uh, James, who is going to give us uh, a quick tour of AppMaker. So over to you, James. Great. Well, thanks a lot, Martin. So um, I guess uh, you know, let me, I'm really excited about AppMaker. So after working on AppScript for many, 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 many years, um, well, since beginning with Roman, uh, <laughs> so we, uh, you know, the AppMaker is, uh, is what's being called a rapid application development a uh, rad um, environment, and what it does is it, it just allows you to build apps really fast. It's very low code, which but it is built on top of AppScript. So uh, it does run from script.google.com when you publish UIs, and, and the idea behind it is to make UIs. And so I just wanted to take in, and let me just uh, do the, the screen share here, and I'll take you to a couple of different places, and then we're going to actually build an app in about 10 minutes, a completely data dri database-driven application from start to finish um, in less than 10 minutes. So um, that should be really, really pretty awesome. Let me uh, switch over. So uh, this is a just uh, just so I could do a quick test here on the screencast. You guys can see this G Suite page here? Yep. Okay, great. Uh, so this is where you want to go to sign up right now. AppMaker is in EAP. And so you would come here. It's uh, gsuite.google.com forward slash AppMaker. We'll get you here. And what you want to do is you want to fill out this form here. And that's not the form to get into the EAP, but it will give you a welcome email. And then in that welcome email, there's another link that you click that's going to take you eventually to a Google form. And that Google form is what you want to fill out. Uh, and a couple of things to note is that AppMaker is only available for G Suite for Business, so what we used to call Unlimited. Uh, so your domain does have to be uh, a business domain in order to get into the EAP. Um, and then the, the checkboxes on the, I think they want to see a little bit of JavaScript experience and some stuff like that. So if you've been doing any kind of coding in, in, uh, in Google Script, then you want to you be able to 
put make the checkboxes. I don't know what the magic combination is on the checkbox to get you in right away, but from from my conversation with Google yesterday, they said they have about two thousand people that have signed up, and so they're going through and vetting all those domains, and so that the the wait is a little bit lengthy at this point, uh, just because of the initial uh, amount of people that signed up. Uh, part of what we're doing with uh, partnering with Google on this is we've created a website called AppMaker University. Uh, it's AppMakerUniversity.com, and uh, what we're doing is training videos so that uh, we can help everybody get up to speed on what's going on with AppMaker, and um, we'll be trying to produce a video a week, and we have a new one coming out here in a couple weeks called Boot Camp that's really kind of uh, takes you through all the steps of creating an app. So. So without further ado, let's jump right into AppMaker. Um, and uh, this is actually the UI for the editor. Uh, and we'll, uh, we're gonna create a, uh, this is a brand new app. It has nothing in it yet. The only thing you're looking at right now is just a blank canvas uh, for a web page. And so uh, you know, the first thing we wanna do in, a, in any kind of database-driven application is, of course, make a database. And so AppMaker makes that really easy. It has uh, a new feature, and, and I don't know how this is going to play out. It's called Google Drive Tables, and I don't know if they're going to allow access from AppScript into this or even be able to see these drive tables in Google Drive, but they are indeed hosted uh, within Google Drive. Uh, but uh, as far as I know, the only way to access them is through um, AppMaker at this point. So we just click on uh, Next, and we'll just call this uh, Places. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a little app that helps us kind of keep track of some of the places we've been and, and the different things we like about them and that kind of thing. So uh, that simple. We just built a, a database, uh, added a field. Uh, we just specify what kind of field we want. We'll call this one location. Um, and if anybody has any questions, just kind of pipe up as I'm going through these really quickly. Um, we're going to do another one with number, and we'll call that rating. Uh, and one thing that's really neat is when you tab through here, it, 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 it with the with the name of the field, it automatically does some capitalization and things like that on the display name to kind of make it a little easier for you, uh, which is great. Um, let's see, we'll do a boolean value here, and we'll say uh, is visited and then a date. I just want to give you guys a kind of a, a whole gamut of the different things that you might be using as far as fields are concerned. And it's really this easy just to be creating your database and going along. Um, let's do one more number and we'll call that one cost. And then um, let's do a string. We'll call this one experience. And for this one, we want to do something special. Let's add, um, let's add some possible values. So we'll just say good. Oops. I guess I hit enter a little too soon there. Good. Average and bad. Okay. That's it. So we've uh, we've put, put a bunch of fields into our database. We've defined a few things. Uh, we've got basically several different types of fields that we're using. Uh, and so what we want to do now is let's click over these the pages section or our pages in our app. Uh, and so we'll call this one. Uh, let's call this one add place. And you notice. That over here on this side here on the on the right hand side we have this thing called the properties editor. So anything that's selected in the screen will be uh, over here. You'll be able to see its properties and be able to adjust it uh, from there. And so the first thing we want to do is add something to this page. Uh, actually, the we want to link the page first to the the data source over here, which is the places database that we just created. Now, the really th cool thing about AppMaker is it also can bring in SQL databases. So if you already have existing databases, you can link to those as well and actually create fields, uh, create new tables, uh, do everything you would do or you expect to do right from AppMaker without having to go to another tool like SQL Pro or something like that uh, to, to control your databases. So that's, that's really a great feature. Um, we have a video on how to set that up. So this little icon up here opens the widgets panel, and most of AppMaker is drag and drop. And so what we have is we have a whole series of, of widgets here that we can just drag right onto the page here. 
and, and we can just, we'll just drop it out here um, in the middle. And because we dropped it on top of the page, and you can see it's going to inherit this place's data source. And we'll do we'll do an edit form so we get all the different features that you can have on a form. And we just click next. And this screen here allows us to either uh, have all the fields or or different fields, things like that. Um, if we want to uh, move a field to a different spot on the form before it's created, then we can just drag and drop them. So that's really handy. Uh, we just click finish, and that's going to create our form for us. So. A couple things. Uh, one, we dropped it on the page, and, and I'd like it to be kind of up there in the upper part of the page. So we can go down here to the layout and just very precisely uh, place that. Um, it gave us a header, uh, so we can we can just uh, we can work with that. I mean, it gave us a description here that we can also do some things with. So let's see, add, edit. Okay. Uh, it automatically created the fields in our database because those are the ones we selected. So we've got the location one, we've got the rating one, we visited, and because this was a boolean, it has it actually created a checkbox for us because it knew it was a boolean. Uh, cost experience is a drop down because we had put in those good, bad, and average. So it it automatically creates that, and then date, of course, is a date field. So let's just take a quick look at that. And so the first time, the very first time you do a preview. Uh, it's going to take a little bit longer to load up because it's got to create a new app script uh, to for all of the information from AppMaker, and it's also going to have to go through a few things like asking for permissions and and all those different pieces. So it does take a little bit more time. And like I said, this was the very first time we created an app. It's, we're starting right from scratch, so you do get a few things. Uh, these typical grant access screens that you're used to seeing in app script uh, haven't really changed. And note the URL up here. So we're we're at script.google.com, and so it's it's t it's running as a as a regular um, uh, UI app. So we click the create button, and we get to add a location. So we'll say uh, New York. Let's do the abbreviation for New York. Uh, let's give it a rating of three, and we'll say we visited there. Cost is one thousand. 33, um, the experience was average, and the date was, I'm just go back and grab the date picker, and that's, so there you go, working form. Let's create one more. Uh, I'll say Mountain View CA, um, rating five, visited, yes, cost 544. And good, and then a date. So here's um, here's our controls down here to navigate through our records. So you can see we're, we're able to navigate those records in the database, and trash can, all that kind of good stuff. So I, there there's just the basics of the app. Not very spectacular, um, but it it did uh, it, it does does look pretty good. A couple things I want to do here is I want to create this as a pop-up form in our app because it, you know right now it's just a, just a page, but I'd rather have it as a pop-up form. So I'm going to put a button out here. Uh, I'm going to say icon. And what's really neat about AppMaker is it uses the material icons, which you can get from um, material.io forward slash icons um, and to, to do its, its different little pieces. So let's, let's change. And we, what we do is we just change the um, change the text on the button, and now we get an X instead of the word close, which is really cool. Um, to add an action to that button, we just do this on click, and we're going to say close dialog. It's really that easy to add that. So the one last thing I want to do here is I just want to size the page because I do want this to be a pop-up in the center of the screen, so I need the page size to match the size of the widget. So I just drag my handles, get rid of that. Guys, if I can get it to move. Come on. Um, drag my handles to just size it to the size of the widget there. Okay, so that's that. Let's do now a new page. We just select page. I'm not going to get into page fragments today, but there are ways to add menus that you can just add as a widget. So you can create an entire page as a widget and then put it onto other pages. And then it becomes like a template, uh, which is really great. Uh, so call this one places. 
And let's add a quick label out here. Uh, the thing that we really like to see about AppMaker is just you know, how easy it is to do all this stuff. So in this label, I'll just double click this one instead of going to the property editor. I can just double click the item and start typing into the text field. Um, we'll call this our faces app. And to style things in AppMaker, we've got a couple different ways, but one of them is this variant menu up here that you saw me use on that button. And it allows us to just scale through uh, the different, different sizes that we might have. We'll just choose that one. That one looks good. Um, and one other thing I'd like to do here is I want to add a little bit more flair to it. So uh, we can put another label out here beside this one here. And for this one, let's call it map. And I'll just change that to an icon. And that gives us the map icon. But it's a little tiny right now. So one thing, that, the way we actually get really into to styling objects in AppMaker is we use the CSS uh, style editor over here. And it allows us to just type regular CSS, uh, like you would use in any web page, uh, right into the UI. So one of the quick ways is if you have something already uh, selected that you want to style, you just hold down your control key and hit spacebar. After you click there. And it, the very first item will be the item that is selected. And so you can just hit that right there. Uh, it does have all the predicting t predictive texting stuff that you would expect to uh, get. So we can do font size. And this, again, I'm just hitting control space bar. Um, and we'll say, let's see, 75 px. And we'll add um, some padding. The top so that it just comes down a little bit. So that's 25 px, and let's just change its color to blue. Okay, and you see we have just a little bit of a sizing issue here, so let's just go and we'll move right over here to the the width, and we'll set it at 100, and we'll set the height at also. 100. And so now we have a nice little map icon for our app, which is great. Um, we'll turn the page. I just clicked on the page, and we want to turn that to paper so it's nice and white, and that looks a little prettier. Uh, and now we'll add an element that allows us to do some CR data. So I'm dragging out a table element, throwing it on the page there. I do want to be able to edit the items in the table itself, so for each item in the row, I would want to be able to edit that. Let's click on Finish. And it creates a table for us uh, automatically on the screen there, which is really kind of cool. Uh, I do want to change a few things around here, though, because I don't want to have just, uh, just a uh, kind of a, a plain uh, thing that I just had in the form. So one of the things we do want to do is we want to be able to open that uh, form that we just made that you saw a few minutes ago. So I'll drag a button out onto the screen here. I'm going to change that to icon, and I'm going to set this text to edit. Edit. <laughs> edit. Edit. Oops, lower, James. Uh, with an on-click handler, and what we want to do there is we want to just say open dialog, and we'll the add places dialog. So there's our, our edit button. Um, the cost here uh, is just a, a standard number. And, and often we want to see or we want to show um, that it's not just a number, uh, it's, it's a dollar amount. And so we don't want the data in the database to be, have a dollar sign in front of it, because then it's going to be a string, and we can't really do math with that without converting and doing a whole bunch of things. So what AppMaker does is allows us to do these things called transformers. And so we can choose a transformer for the different object type. And for this one, we'll just choose uh, this one with the pound sign and cents. And because I want a dollar sign in front of it, I'll just actually click right in there and add a dollar sign. So that'll format um, our, our um, cost. Dates also have a way of formatting. So if, if, you're, if you're happier with a different kind of date, we can select that right from there. And the rating here is, if you remember, we were choosing from a dropdown or from a numbers, just typing in a number, one, two, three, four, that kind of thing. Uh, and that's OK, but it's kind of boring. So let's just delete that object. And um, let's add in 
one of these star ratings, which is really cool. Uh, kind of a neat, neat little piece, and I'll have to make a little bit more room on our UI for this, obviously. So the, when you add an item onto the screen there, you just have to click in its value and choose what kind of a value that is. Um, we'll click in the binding and we'll say rating. And now that's bound to it. And it has a few other features, and I cover that in another video as well. So it uh, looks like we could go a little bit wider here uh, with our sizing. So let's just make our table just a little bit wider. And one of the things that's really great here is you can just hold down your shift key and just drag and select a bunch of items at once. And then we can just move them over to the side to give us just a little bit more room. So uh, that was quite a bit of formatting and stuff. There's one more thing I want to add, but just to uh, try this out, let's go ahead and click on the preview button and we'll see how, how these different features work and look in the app. Uh, one of the things I found is, and, and something you might have noticed is we, we really have, well, we wrote a little bit of CSS, but we haven't written any code yet. <laughs> you know, and, and actually we aren't going to write any code in this in this preview. Um, now, the the one place that, that I haven't shown yet, but there is, you can create client-side scripts and server-side scripts, uh, and those are in just your, what you would expect in the app script. Um, and, and I also wanted to note that this is the preview when you, window, so it does give you the error console at the bottom, and it gives you a way to navigate your different pages up at the top. Um, so uh, we do have our star rating now, and you can see it's working. Uh, if we uh, change the stars, they just automatically check, and we can uncheck and uncheck our boxes. Uh, so this form is, is actually active. Um, if we wanted to uh, uh, change our, our ratings and that sort of thing. And you can see our dollar signs are now showing up in formatting as currency for that. Uh, if we click our button, let's see, we get our form and it does a nice uh, modal and you can see it's the record that we were selecting. So it automatically gets that selected for us. Everything in AppMaker is data bound. So if you kind of look over here behind you know, in the modal at the mountain view, if I check this box here, it's automatically updates it's bound to the database so that's a live update there's no save buttons or anything like that it just it's just all data bound uh, so that's really kind of cool uh, the last thing I'd like to do is just kind of polish off our app because it's already pretty impressive now that you know in just a few minutes we've built this uh, one more thing I'd like to add to it is an actual map so um, I want to go ahead and create a page for that so I can pop it up in the center of the screen and so we'll, we'll add a page here We'll go down here and we'll set its data source to places. And um, let's open the widget panel here and we'll scroll down here and Google gives us this really great little uh, Google map widget here. So you can just drag that up. Um, I'm gonna place it right up there. I don't think I got quite at zero, so let's make sure we do. And we'll make it bigger so that it sticks out in the center. Uh, and because we're going to create this as a dialogue, we're going to want to have a close button again. So we just grab a button, throw it up here on the screen, um, click on an icon, go to close, and set it to close dialogue. Position it right there, and that looks like a pretty nice map. We're going to Again, make the page just the size so we get that nice modal effect in the middle. And boom. Okay, there's that. The last thing we want to do here is we want to set um, the, we want to click on the map. Ooh, I got a little bit of extra gray in there. Kind of like my hair. Um, we want to set the, the address of this map to the uh, to the binding of the location that we have in our database. And that way, it, it, that, that's how it knows what to key off of. Uh, so that's what we needed there. Uh, we just bounce back over to our places table and we'll throw another button out there to open our map. And this one we'll call place. Select the icon and there's that, just as simple as that. Drop it right there on click and we'll do open dialogue and well, I guess I called it new page, which is fine. 
that's the page. I didn't rename the page there, but we'll just we'll just leave it a new page. And we'll just click on that and give her a go. So we'll see if I forgot any steps along the way. <laughs> this is you know actually unscripted. It's just as I've been doing it all day long for days and days. Uh, so now we have our different uh, uh, places here. Let's just click on the map and let's see. Oh, yep, that looks like Mountain View. Uh, we close that and we reopen that one and there's New York. So now we have map integration into our, our places. So that's AppMaker. That's just a quick quick review. I don't know how many minutes that was, but we, uh, we did accomplish creating a pretty neat app in a pretty short amount of time. So I'm trying to figure out how to get that screen sharing shut off. <laughs> So yeah, and um, I, I've been fortunate to see a bit, a bit further beyond that, and I know that you've just, just got you know tip of the iceberg there in terms of stuff. You, you Absolutely. Know, as, you, as you mentioned, there's the whole actual you know you can still do app script server client uh, scripting yourself. So you you know on top of the lovely interfaces and. Um, you know the ease of creating stuff quite quickly. Well, very quickly. Uh, there is the power of App Script under the hood as well. Yeah, definitely. I, it, and really, what it's done for us is because we do a lot of UI work. We, we do a whole lot of UI work for our clients. And you know, there's still a lot of backend stuff that you have to do. We have to connect to Gmail. We have to connect to documents and all those things. And all that stuff is still written in App Script. And you just create a script. And, and just add those functions to the front end piece. But it, it's basically made it to where we don't have to deal with front end UI stuff at all, you know, other than just drag and drop and wire it up. And that's, that's pretty amazing. So you get all the power of App Script and all the things that it can do with a really, really easy way to build the UIs. So we've got a couple of minutes for questions. Uh, um, if someone just wants to unmute and um, ask James a question, you're more than welcome. Yes, I have a question. Uh, how about collaboration? So you went in there, can you collaborate? And if there is collaboration, is it real time? Absolutely. Uh, well, OK, so it is real time in the respect that it's more like real time like spreadsheets. So if you drag a widget out onto the seat, so you share the project like you would anything in, in, in Drive. And uh, somebody else, everybody has to be within the same domain. So that's, uh, that's one important thing to remember with, with AppMaker is right now it's restricted to within your domain. And there's no, uh, currently because it's being sell, sold as having to have a, a G Suite business class, it's gonna stay that way for a while, I think. The first thing I said, like, like in the first five minutes of the, of the first class I took on this with Google was, well, are we going to be able to release this to the public? Because I know businesses are going to want to make UIs that their customers can use. And they're like, no. <laughs> so, so we're hoping that maybe we'll be able to push that and get it to where we can just create UIs for anybody. But right now, it's just within your domain. So the sharing is the same way. And it's drag and drop. So if you drag something onto the screen, uh, once you drop it, everyone else will see it. And if you click it and edit it, you'll see your edits. And then when you hit, uh, hit enter, then those edits will show up for everybody. So it is it is collaborative. So uh, very that, nice, thank uh, you. Yeah, it's great. Good question, Steve. We got um, some time. Is, is someone else? Okay. I have one more one question here. Has within your domain is this going to be uh, compatible with the new sites embed URL feature? So um, not it's not there yet because you can't embed any. Well, the, the best way to do this is to use Awesome Table. Uh, uh, Roman could probably um, do a little bit more of that, and I have done that um, just to test it out. So it does work. Um, the problem is right now the new sites doesn't unless something changed in the last couple of days. Um, the new sites doesn't have a way to insert an app script. Um, but when it does, if it, if it does, I guess I should say, um, you can insert. It. Like any app script we've been doing in, in, in Google Sites for, for a long time. So um, it's because it's the same thing. It's it's running off of script.google.com. It is the app script you so, yeah. All right, thanks. I think we've got time for one more question, if anyone else is. Yeah, one more question. The AppMaker University, is that built on AppMaker? Uh, it it looks a lot like it would be, but unfortunately, no. <laughs> because, okay. 
<laughs> if, you can't make it, if I had the opportunity, I would. Um, but no, it's actually uh, Angular 2 uh, running on Firebase. So <laughs> it's, it's funny, James. You always get asked that question. I, I, uh, <laughs> You're just going to have to start lying. But you say, I can't tell yeah, you how we did it. <laughs> special need special where I can, I can publish publicly, yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't. Well, it looks, uh, thanks, James, for that. Um, uh, as we said, very tip of the iceberg look at at, at Maker. Um, um, I'm, I'm sure that there's going to be lots of interesting stuff that people can do. That um, and uh, anything where you're spending less time on UI can only be a good thing in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it does simplify a lot of things, and and yeah, like you say, it is very much the tip of the iceberg. There are. It, it gets much, much, much deeper, and we'll, and like I said, we'll, we're going to try to be bringing out a video a week, so, um, so we'll be covering all those deep topics. Uh, well, you mentioned the awesome tables there, so um, that that's probably a, a a good segue as I'm ever going to get today to uh, introduce uh, Romain. Um, uh, offer of awesome tables, uh, uh, yeah, another mail merge, and um, a whole host of other um, script projects. Hi, Romain. So uh, you're going to uh, reveal some of your secrets in terms of how you're using analytics in some of your add-ons um, to, to gain some insight. Yes, exactly. Uh, so uh, contrary to James, uh, this uh, uh, won't actually be a, a demo of a product, uh, but uh, mostly a presentation of uh, uh, what I'm doing with uh, with analytics. Uh, the thing is, so this is uh, mostly for uh, add-ons developers and uh, also people who are creating uh, internal uh, web apps for their companies uh, and so on. Uh, the the thing is, uh, once you uh, start to uh, spend a lot of uh, time on the app script project or web app project uh, you well at some point you uh, you are interested in uh, getting some uh, statistics uh, about usage of uh, of your app and uh, when it comes to uh, app script there are uh, some uh, specificities and uh, uh, really uh, uh, interesting way to, to use analytics. So that's uh, what I will uh, demo uh, just uh, just now. Uh, OK. So uh, can you see my screen? Yep. The presentation, the perfect. Uh, so I will use uh, yet another mail merge as an example uh, in, this, uh, in this presentation, uh, because yet another mail merge is uh, uh, successful add-on uh, in terms of uh, uh, usage. Uh, we have uh, more than uh, 600,000 installations, uh, but uh, that doesn't end up uh, with a user trying it once and then uh, completely uh, stopping using it. Uh, we have uh, more than uh, 80,000 uh, monthly active users, so uh, 80,000 uh, people uh, who are sending uh, emails uh, every month, uh, at least at least once a month. But we have users also sending emails every day with the tool, uh, and uh, we are uh, uh, sending uh, roughly uh, 40 million emails uh, per month. Uh, so uh, those are. Uh, nice numbers, and uh, I know them uh, thanks to analytics. Uh, so just to give you an overview and maybe a background about analytics, uh, analytics was, uh, well, first created to uh, measure uh, uh, websites metrics, uh, the success of your website. So uh, it was uh, at first uh, simply uh, uh, JavaScript tracker uh, that you could embed in your site. And as uh, the web has evolved a lot and uh, needs have evolved a lot, uh, analytics is now compatible with uh, mobile apps uh, and also with uh, 
internet connected device. Uh, and uh, that means that, uh, well, uh, analytics simply offer a uh, RESTful uh, API uh, so people can uh, simply make HTTPS uh, requests uh, to send data to, to analytics. And this means that, uh, yes, we can uh, use it uh, in any platform, including uh, app scripts. And uh, I will uh, show that I'm actually uh, using it uh, uh, on the uh, server and client side uh, in my add-on. Uh, but first, so uh, what should we track uh, when we uh, want to uh, begin the implementation of uh, uh, analytics uh, in an add-on, for example? Uh, so uh, as I said, analytics was uh, created first for uh, websites. So uh, the uh, basic usual thing you track in Google Analytics are page views uh, with the uh, URL or pass of uh, the uh, page uh, user is uh, uh, as uh, as viewed uh, as opens, uh, and in web apps uh, you will track events. Uh, so there's another part of analytics reports uh, focusing on events, and uh, with events you can send all kind of events. Uh, and uh, in my case, for example, I will be mainly focused on uh, well sending information about uh, emails sent, as it's the uh, primary uh, goal of uh, yet another mail merge. Uh, but I will also be interested in uh, tracking other metrics, like the number of uh, installations. Uh, so I can see the number of installation per week, per month, and compare uh, between two months if I have uh, more or less installation. Uh, I can uh, also uh, track a lot of different actions uh, made by users on the app. And usually, uh, each time I'm asking a new question to myself, uh, while well, I end up uh, adding a new uh, tracking on analytics to uh, investigate on this question. Uh, so if we focus, for example, uh, on uh, analyzing uh, uh, the basic usage of uh, yet another mail merge. We uh, could compare, for example, uh, the number of campaigns. So uh, that's actually useful. In uh, analytics, you can uh, send uh, one uh, event uh, which will have a specific uh, value. And for example, here, I've decided to uh, send uh, one event uh, per campaign, per email campaign, uh, with the uh, number of emails sent uh, in that campaign. And this means that uh, I have a nice uh, dashboard automatically created uh, by analytics where I can see uh, the number of campaigns uh, on a specific period of time, uh, the no total number of emails sent uh, within those campaigns, and the average number of emails sent per campaign. Uh, and I can uh, compare the difference between uh, a month, one month or another uh, to see if uh, usage is uh, growing or not. Uh, here uh, you can see, for example, that uh, the number of emails sent per campaign uh, is uh, slightly above uh, 50 emails, uh, which is uh, which makes sense as the uh, freemium plan uh, in yet other mail merge. Uh, let you send uh, only uh, 50 emails per day. Uh, you have many, many uh, pre-built uh, uh, reports in, uh, in analytics. And I think that's uh, one of the uh, nice things of the tool. Uh, you could use a lot of other uh, external databases to record all events happening in your app. Uh, but if you want, if you decide to use analytics, uh, you will have all the uh, uh, all the reports already created, uh, which is really nice to uh, avoid uh, putting too much uh, effort in uh, uh, building those uh, uh, those reports. So, for example, here I can see the uh, number of emails sent uh, per country uh, and also the number of users per country. Uh, Sending events to Google Analytics is uh, uh, quite simple. Uh, 
on the client side, uh, as uh, we are uh, serving uh, or uh, web parts, web pages uh, in add-ons uh, using the HTML service, uh, we can include uh, the uh, JavaScript uh, li library that uh, uh, Google Analytics provide, uh, and then uh, simply uh, send events uh, using the uh, GA uh, method to uh, to send all the information. Uh, and this uh, tool provided by Analytics uh, lets you send quite a lot of uh, information, in fact, uh, when sending a single event to uh, to analytics. So uh, you can send uh, basic information, uh, like an event and uh, information about that event, but you can also add a lot of uh, information related to uh, your uh, specific application, so specific dimension uh, that will uh, let you uh, filter and aggregate data in different way, ways later on. Uh, I will uh, come back to that uh, in a, a few slides. Uh, and of course, uh, you can also uh, send data to analytics uh, from server side using your fetch uh, to yes uh, call the uh, endpoint uh, ssl.googleanalytics.com slash collect uh, to send data to analytics. Uh, which means that uh, if your app uh, is uh, running with the with a UI opened and the a user is uh, interacting uh, with your with your app uh, from a UI, I would advise to uh, use the uh, uh, tracking on client side. Uh, and if your app uh, your add-on is uh, running uh, via a trigger. Uh, either time-driven trigger or on form summit trigger and so on. Uh, well, you won't have a UI, you won't have a, an HTML page, so you won't be able to uh, make use of the uh, client-side uh, uh, course to analytics. Uh, so in that case, it makes sense to use URL fetch. But uh, as there are uh, quote, specific quota on URL fetch and so on, uh, when possible, I think it's best to uh, switch to uh, client-side calls. Uh, so one important, uh, one of the many main things that you, you want to track uh, is your user growth uh, to see if you uh, get uh, more or less users. Uh, and uh, in analytics, uh, well, by default, uh, on uh, public sites, uh, you have the ability uh, to uh, well, analytics makes use of a cookie in the web browser. Uh, so this means that uh, if the user, uh, uh, if the same user uh, browse your site from uh, two different computers, uh, two different web browser, or two different devices, uh, a phone and a computer, uh, it will be recorded at, as two completely different users. And this means that your number of users won't be 100% accurate. But uh, in fact, this is something that uh, can be uh, improved. Uh, and uh, we will see that uh, uh, we can uh, pass a specific parameter uh, to Google Analytics, uh, a specific uh, user ID, uh, in addition to any cookie that will be passed to, uh, to Analytics, and that will uh, let you accurately track uh, the exact number of uh, users of your app. This is uh, possible uh, simply by because uh, your users are actually authenticated within your app. Uh, they are using their uh, Google account uh, to open your app and so on, or your, or your add-on. Uh, so you can uh, accurately uh, track them, uh, even if you can't uh, collect their email address or things like that. In, in analytics. <coughs> there are, uh, as I said, one of the nice things about analytics is that uh, you don't have to uh, recreate uh, many things. Many reports are uh, already uh, available by default. Uh, so for example, there's a report where you can see uh, actions 
uh, of a specific user, uh, seeing, for example, that here uh, he has uh, installed the add-on at uh, 9 a.m., uh, then uh, used uh, one of the uh, features of the app of the add-on uh, to uh, retrieve uh, contacts uh, from Google Contacts. Uh, then he sent a test email. Uh, then he sent his first campaign uh, and uh, reached uh, the quota, the free quota of uh, 50 emails per day. Uh, so I have here uh, the uh, life of the user and uh, I will be able to see if uh, he ends up uh, uh, purchasing a license uh, to send more emails or not. And uh, if it does not, does not, uh, I will try to uh, improve uh, my uh, uh, my flow, presenting my uh, uh, paying plan and so on to uh, better uh, encourage the user uh, to uh, to purchase and upgrade. Uh, Upgrade this account. <coughs> this is to uh, this was to check a uh, uh, action of a specific user, uh, but you can also monitor a uh, common behavior uh, and see, for example, uh, uh, what people are doing right after they have uh, installed uh, your add-on, for example, uh, and uh, you can see uh, here, for example, we can see that a lot of people. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> a lot of people are actually mm, installing uh, and don't do anything uh, right after. And so if we see those kind of uh, information in analytics, it's useful to uh, investigate and try to uh, learn uh, why uh, they, are, uh, they are stopping uh, uh, right after the installation, uh, what we can improve to uh, decrease the number of people uh, who uh, install but don't do anything after that. Uh, knowing that for every add-on or web app, you will always have a, a part of the users who you don't know why, but they uh, simply install and never actually end up using it. Uh, so, as I was uh, saying, uh, there are uh, two different uh, IDs in analytics. Uh, the client ID, which is uh, basically the uh, session cookie uh, that is added automatically by analytics uh, in the web browser uh, to track uh, if the same user uh, is visiting uh, your website uh, more than once. <coughs> Uh, letting you uh, uh, split users between um, uh, new users and uh, users who has already uh, uh, come to the site before. Uh, and a user ID. User ID is uh, not an option activated by default uh, in Google Analytics uh, because you need to provide yourself a specific ID uh, for each user. Uh, when you make uh, each call to analytics. And uh, using the user ID is uh, really useful uh, if you want to uh, exactly count the, uh, the exact number of uh, users of your app and not uh, the number of, uh, for example, uh, uh, number of uh, uh, devices uh, or browsers as uh, new cookies created uh, on each web browser, each device, and so on. Mm. So yeah, if you, uh, I don't think it's especially uh, necessary to uh, start with a, with a user ID uh, when you start using analytics, uh, but that's definitely an improvement you can add uh, once you have uh, started to use analytics and uh, once you want to start uh, to get more accurate statistics. Uh, also, not that there's a specific uh, issue with app scripts. Uh, if you are using uh, Google Analytics on the client side, uh, not that uh, cookies are not persistent, uh, meaning that uh, if the same user uh, load uh, your add-on in a dialogue or a sidebar uh, multiple times, 
each time a new uh, a new web page uh, uh, served by the HTML service uh, will be displayed. A new cookie will be uh, created. Uh, so this means that your number of uh, session uh, will uh, be very similar to the number of users, as if every action, every time uh, the uh, your add-on was used, it was used by a new user and not by uh, the same user who uh, used it before. Uh, if you want to know more about that, I uh, published a year ago uh, a blog post on the uh, Google uh, Developer Blog uh, about uh, uh, those kind of uh, issues with app scripts, uh, so you can uh, see how to uh, better track uh, add-on usage. Uh, and uh, uh, for example, here, uh, instead of uh, cookies, uh, we can use uh, the uh, local storage uh, in the web browser uh, to uh, save the uh, client ID uh, and also pass as a parameter the user ID. And if you do all that, uh, it will let you uh, make a better use uh, of uh, analytics uh, from client side uh, in, in add-ons. Uh, so yeah, as I was saying before, uh, you can add your own uh, information to analytics, meaning that uh, by default, analytics will uh, grab some information uh, from the connected user, uh, like uh, the country. Uh, and that's how we uh, we were able to see uh, our uh, geographic report, uh, letting us uh, see how many users uh, we had in a specific country. Uh, but you can also include your own dimension. And for example, this is pretty useful uh, if I want to uh, uh, track uh, all uh, the options uh, when uh, users are sending uh, a new campaign with, uh, uh, with yet another mail merge. And so for example, <clears throat> I can see uh, the number of users uh, who are uh, uh, checking the box to uh, uh, track the emails sent with uh, yet another mail merge. Uh, I can see if uh, they are uh, using uh, markers, placeholder uh, in their uh, email templates, uh, or if they are sending the same email to uh, every of the recipients, and so on and so on. And all those options uh, can be uh, created as a new dimension uh, in Google Analytics. Uh, to be able to create uh, nice uh, dashboards and new reports uh, for you to uh, investigate uh, on the usage of uh, a specific feature of your add-on. Uh, and you can also uh, compare usage over time uh, to see, for example, uh, here uh, the uh, email tracking feature is used uh, more and more by, uh, by our users, uh, mainly because we've made a lot of improvements uh, on this feature, uh, we also uh, better advised, uh, advertise it uh, in the add-on, and so on and so on. So uh, more and more people are uh, activating uh, or letting it uh, activated by default. Uh, and it's nice uh, when you see that uh, a feature you have uh, added is uh, more and more used, and uh, it motivates you to uh, invest even more in, uh, in it. Uh, I can also see, for example, if uh, the number of uh, paying users uh, is uh, uh, increasing uh, or not uh, on a specific uh, period of time. So for example, here, I can see that uh, during the same period of time, uh, my number of my total number of users has increased, but the total number of paying users, active paying users, have increased more uh, than the number of uh, uh, active view of uh, new active users. So uh, this means that uh, 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 among my active users, I have more and more paying users, uh, which is always uh, good to know. Uh, and you can, of course, uh, yes, uh, build uh, custom reports to display the data in any way you want. Uh, here I'm uh, uh, comparing a bit uh, usage uh, depending on the uh, uh, domain name and so on. Uh, not that uh, in Google Analytics, you are not allowed to track uh, 
personal uh, uh, some information like uh, email addresses, billing information, and so on. I think uh, domain names are uh, okay to collect. Uh, I hope uh, I'm doing it, uh, but uh, I'm not uh, going uh, about that. Uh, so uh, that's all. R really, uh, the nice thing about analytics, it's very easy to uh, get started with it. Uh, as I've seen, uh, as I've shown, uh, there are some uh, tricks uh, linked to uh, App Script. You need to decide if you want to use it on client side, on server side, or both. Uh, if you use it on client side, uh, you need to be aware of uh, uh, some limitation linked to cookies that are not persistent. Uh, but it's easy to get started with it uh, without uh, asking you all those questions and improve your tracking over time. Uh, but uh, start simple. Uh, it's highly customizable. Uh, so if you want to create new data, new, re uh, new reports, it's uh, very easy. If you want to uh, send new data to analytics, it's quite easy to do. Uh, there's a big community uh, uh, to, to help you uh, find uh, examples and so on uh, on the web to, uh, to get started. Uh, it has APIs, exports. There's actually a Google Analytics add-on uh, for a Google Spreadsheet. Uh, so you can also uh, retrieve back uh, your data uh, in a spreadsheet if you want to uh, analyze, analyze it uh, in a spreadsheet rather than creating a custom report in analytics and so on. And I wanted to finish uh, on the uh, Firebase analytics simply because uh, uh, I'm uh, using more and more uh, Firebase uh, in my add-ons. And so, uh, well, I would be very interested to uh, test also the integration of Firebase Analytics. And uh, maybe at some point I will. Uh, at the moment, it's only compat compatible with uh, iOS and Android uh, uh, apps. Uh, so you cannot uh, use Firebase Analytics for uh, web apps. Uh, and you cannot use it uh, for add-ons, uh, but uh, uh, maybe in the future we will be, and uh, so maybe it will be time to uh, switch to Firebase Analytics at some point. I will see. Well, thanks for that, Romain. That's uh, a wonderful insight in in terms of how you've um, you know you're using Google Analytics. I think in particular, I liked how you you know you addressed that that you can use analytics on the client side or the server side. Um, so I think that's a, a huge tip for people. We've we got some time for questions from the audience. So if um, anyone wants to, uh, oh, we lost Romain, but he's Sorry. back. Well, I rambled. So that's that's perfect. Perfect timing. We've got uh, a couple of moments for questions. If anyone wants to grab the mic and um, pick Romain's brain, I will. For one quick question. So could you um, just kind of clarify so when you were tracking you know what the user did where you see where you're able to see you know where they where they opened it where they used it the first time where they hit their quota is are you doing all that on the server side in app script so you can accurately track uh, so uh, for example to check if a user uh, is uh, using uh, the add-on for the first time uh, actually uh, I um, creating uh, user profiles in Firebase. I'm using Firebase as my uh, database for user profiles. And uh, I wanted to, to check, uh, for example, if uh, people were uh, trying to uh, install the add-on, uh, use it, then uninstall, and try to use it again and see if they uh, get back their full quota or not, and so on. Uh, so now I'm uh, uh, retrieving uh, storing information from Firebase. And based on the data I have in Firebase, I'm also sending uh, data uh, to Google Analytics. Uh, so in Firebase, I have uh, my uh, user profile uh, who will uh, stay the same, uh, uh, will always stay the same. Uh, I have the same uh, date of uh, uh, user account creation, uh, username, and so on. And in Analytics, I have uh, all the data that uh, evolves uh, every day, every month, and so on. Great. 
to to add on to add on to that um so are you all right so the are you sending the profile information that's in the, the firebase for the profiles into google analytics uh, how are you rationalizing the two uh so in uh in firebase uh i'm uh as it's my uh, own database for my own product uh, i can uh, store the uh, information I want, and I can store uh, the uh, email addresses uh, uh, and uh, first name and last name of uh, uh, each of my users, uh, which is uh, not authorized uh, in uh, Google Analytics. Uh, so I have a specific uh, unique ID uh, for each user, and this is the uh, common link uh, between uh, Firebase and Google Analytics. Uh, I, I'm using an ID created in Firebase uh, that I'm sending uh, to Google Analytics and that I'm using as the uh, user ID uh, to accurately uh, track the number of active users every month. Got it. Thank you. It's a, a nice trick that a lot of people aren't aware of that, you know, when you export data from Google Analytics, you, you know, you can use the user ID and then if you if you do have other data you can match match the sources yeah. so yeah that's um, uh, usually what uh, google analytics uh, advises uh, to to do so uh, well, for storing your your access ids and things like that to firebase and analytics um I, i'm assuming you're not using script properties because it has a very small quota or are you just putting that information into the code uh, so, uh, actually, uh, uh, Google Analytics, uh, you, you don't uh, send a, a password or a, a token or whatever to uh, send data to Analytics. Uh, if you get my, uh, 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 my Analytics account key, uh, you can easily uh, spam uh, my uh, Google Analytics account, and that's uh, actually uh, uh, a new thing people are uh, doing at the moment, uh, not uh, to, to me, but uh, 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 Google is, uh, fight, has to fight a lot of uh, uh, spammers who are uh, sending uh, data to uh, a lot of different uh, uh, analytics profile, simply because as uh, Google Analytics uh, is usually uh, used in uh, uh, public websites uh, on client side, uh, there cannot be any uh, authentication mechanism and uh, 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 once you get the uh, uh, the ID of a Google Analytics uh, account uh, you can uh, start sending uh, sending information uh, for uh, firebase I do have uh, uh, a private key uh, and uh, we uh, created uh, with uh, Spencer a library called uh, Firebase, firebase app uh, to uh, better make uh, use of uh, uh, Firebase uh, from the server side uh, of, uh, of AppScript. Uh, and uh, at the moment, I think the uh, Firebase app uh, key is uh, stored directly in the uh, AppScript editor. Uh, not in, so it's, uh, uh, it's the value for, for a specific variable. Yeah, we'd run into that. Uh or we'd like to store them in script properties, but the very small quota per minute makes it really difficult for large-scale apps, for sure. Um, and we're actually, by the way, great job on that library. We're using that on AppMaker University to pull the, to, to query the user information that we're collecting. Perfect. There, there was at some point an issue, well, when we first created this, uh, uh, this library, uh, in some, uh, in, in the case of specific errors, uh, the error message that was sent back to the user uh, contained uh, the, uh, the the key, uh, the secret key to access uh, the, the database, and uh, it was sent to uh, uh, end users. Um, but we uh, fixed that uh, uh, as soon as we discovered that. Uh, but uh, uh, you have to pay attention not to uh, share this private key uh, too easily. Uh, the good thing is uh, now uh, that uh, Firebase has been uh, reworked uh, by Google and so on, uh, 
uh, private keys uh, are not uh, used so much. And uh, now you can uh, create a service account instead and so on, uh, which make things a bit more secure. Well, I think we've got time for one more quick question. So I'll let someone grab the mic if they want to. I've got one if no one else does. Go on, Reed. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, all of this, uh, okay, so I've rolled my own analytics for, they're, they're sort of like process-minded so, so that I can look at the user experience in my add-on and understand how the code is doing itself. I, don't, I have a very small user set, so I don't have to worry about, you know, a lot of people hitting it. So, so what I've heard here, a lot of great information and in that it's okay to have complementary sets of analytical things going on that could, because you can uh, mash them up for various reasons. Uh, one of the things that is outstanding in my mind is, is how I would go about automating some testing of, of an add-on or, or any app for that matter. Um, and when you do that testing, you're gonna be generating things that, you know, analytics. And my thinking currently is you should go ahead and keep, if you have an add-on or an app, you know, all of the analytics you generate should eventually be put somewhere that are that is in the same place. There might not be a reason to separate the user analytics from like analytics generated by developers or somebody testing something. And that, that's my current thinking. And I just I don't know the answer to the question on how how to go about testing or automated testing of an add-on. Well it depends how complex your add-on and how complex you uh, want your uh, workflow to be. Uh, at uh, so, for example, uh, in my company, we are supporting uh, many add-ons, including uh, the mail merge and form publisher. We have a lot of uh, users for them, and we have uh, several developers uh, working on them as well. Uh, so, it is uh, preferable to have a different uh, version of the script, uh, one version uh, in production. Uh, available, uh, well, the, the version uh, used by uh, all users, and uh, several uh, versions created by uh, develop uh, the developers, uh, who are which are usually uh, linked uh, to uh, a specific uh, Google Analytics account, and also a specific uh, Firebase database, and so on and so on. So uh, you we usually create a wall uh, developer environment uh, that is uh, separated uh, from the production environment. And uh, to do that, actually, uh, we are using uh, less and less uh, the uh, AppScript uh, online code editor and uh, are uh, mostly using uh, WebStorm and uh, Bitbucket as a repository, code repository. Uh, and uh, we are uh, doing some uh, grunt work and so on to uh, replace all viable between uh, developer version and production version to be sure that uh, we are deploying what we want to deploy with the right IDs and so on. Uh, but yeah, in uh, app script, if you want, you can uh, start building a quite complex uh, workflow to, uh, to work and uh, test uh, appropriately your, uh, your add-on or your web app. Uh, I suppose it really depends uh, on the uh, yeah the the number of uh, users you have and uh, uh, how uh, what uh, what you what is your your, your best uh, uh, what is the best workflow for you? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, workflow is definitely the secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, um, I, I'm just going to, unfortunately, we've run out of time, so I'd, um, I'd like to thank Romain and James for uh, popping by and uh, sharing some of their expertise with us. Um, it's been thank great. you for inviting us. <laughs> thank you. Um, so this is the last year of the year, but we will be back in 2017. Um, and so there looks like a lot to talk about as well with... Um, the various early access programs and the um, AppScript seems to be um, in a rich period of development right now. Um, following feedback from previous shows, 
we have started collating show notes, so we'll be uh, putting together uh, clips from this episode, and also um, I'll be uh, harassing James and Romain for anything that they can share to add to those notes. Um, we'll share it as well. The The site is um, a new Google site, so I wanted to dog food new Google sites. I had quite a lot of fun. Um, and we'll share the link out so you can get access to that. Other than that, um, wish you all well for the holidays, and we'll see you in 2017.